my Kennedy with you. I thought I'd do something interesting this interesting to me. I don't know about you, but you'll have to watch it anyway, right? Uh, I thought I'd put together kind of a car camping kit, survival kit, whatever, with the caveat being that I can only buy things at yard sales and I only and I want them to be really, really inexpensive. So I think that would mean keeping every, anything under $5, or if it is more than that, it would have to be an outstanding value. So uh, the first thing we could throw in, which I've done videos about this, this was the uh, Swiss Army knife, Victorian Ox uh, trucker, $5. It's like $70 to buy. It has, since it's it's multi-use. Now, I know people, a lot of people don't like something serrated. They have a version of this, the German, excuse me, the German army carries it, but other armies too. But they have one with, that has this, just the straight blade all the way down and no serrations. But I think the idea behind including it on this is because you're not necessarily looking at, to be a bushcraft knife. You're looking for it to be something that can be used for wood, but most can be used for cutting cordage and things like that. So that's where the serration comes in play. This has a really nice saw. It doesn't lock. That's the one problem. The, the, the blade and the screwdriver lock so that you can really, uh, you know, get a grip on it. Uh, and it's, uh, you, you liner lock, so you press, and it's left-handed, it's a left-handed liner lock, which is, which is kind of bizarre, if I might say so, in my opinion. Uh, uh, and it's got the, the toothpick and the, uh, tweezers. It's got a Phillips screwdriver, too. So I think the idea how on the trigger, it, oh, it's got an all too, a reamer. I should say reamer. This is a reamer. If it has a hole on it, it becomes an all. But uh, I think the idea behind this is that you, as a trekker, a hiker, whatever, you're going to be interfacing with a bunch of things. So you, it might be important to you to have the serrated blade to have the screwdrivers and things like that because of, you know, equipment. So anyway, that. Uh, my first Mora knife was at a yard sale for $5. I don't have that with me right now, but this I spent three bucks on. This is an aluminum pot. And it had a, uh, a cup in it as well. I believe this is a, this appears to be stainless steel. But it will fit inside the, you know, cup, the pot. And it's uh, kind of an almost snug fit. But, it, you know, uh, some people will do, or have seen, kits that are completely contained within one of these. Uh, you know, to make kind of double use. It's, it's the container, and it's also... Uh, uh, the pot, the container to hold the stuff, and also a pot. So that's the sort of things we're going to try to look for. I'll I'll, I'll put a link to the one of the videos about this. Also, I got a really nice sleeping bag for three dollars. That would go in the kit. I know I bought an axe one year for five dollars. Although that uh, probably needs to be sharpened, cleaned up a little, and it doesn't have a guard on it. So. I'm, I'm going to try to make one of those out of leather or something. and uh, But I thought it'd be fun just to put these things together and get viewer suggestions and things like that. But basically, trying to put something together over the course of the, sum, the yard sale season, which has started now, goes into summer and fall, and see what I can come up with. One of the, the best deals I came up with was uh, these really expensive L.L. Bean snowshoes. And uh, what happened, I was at a yard sale, and the guy, they had those, and I was kind of eyeing them. And I went back to it a couple of times. And 
you know, I think it said he wanted $50, which was a decent price considering how much these, these were the oldest style with a wooden rib, wooden rim and the webbing. And uh, basically he saw me looking at it and he says, he basically got it down to $5. To make, he didn't want to carry them back in the house. Those are the yard sales I like. And I did that same thing with a uh, compound bow. The guy just wanted it out of there. You know, there's yard sales where people are cleaning their house. And uh, then there's yard sales where people are actually trying to, you know, sell things to make money. So, uh, and then you have a mixture in between, I guess. But uh, the ones that they're just trying to get rid of the stuff, of course, is much better. Now, the idea with some of these yard sales, these items, like, could they have sold this for more than $5? Yes. But how would they have done it? They would have to list it somewhere, you know, then they have to deal with shipping, meeting people, and you know. So, like, I think he, he, he could have easily got 25 for this, no problem. But how much is your time worth? In other words, you've got to go through all of that. Just like in eBay, you know, sometimes if you're thinking of selling something on eBay, then you, you know, I've already got an account set up, but you know, you have to go through all that rigmarole, take a picture, you know, explain the item, figure out what the shipping costs are going to be, deal with people that, you know, I don't know. So sometimes people want a quick sale to get rid of the item. They want some compensation, but they're looking for concentrate, uh, compensation for all of it. So in other words, they're not thinking, I bought this for $69. I want to get $30 for it. They're thinking, I have all of the stuff that I'm going to have to bring back in the house if I don't sell it. And I will, but I'm hoping that I'll make $200, $300 today. Or smaller yard sales might only be $25. But so it affects the pricing quite dramatically. But there we go. So we've got we got a knife, we got the more knife, we got the pot, we got the cop, we got a sleeping bag. I'm gonna be looking for a stove. That will be interesting to see what I can find for a stove. I think what I would run into before I find something like a folding saw and everything, folding, folding saw, folding stove, stove. I'm talking about stoves now. You know, the, some of the nice ones that people use for you know, hiking and things like that. Probably what I'd run into first is the, the double burner type camp one where you you uh, attach a uh, tank of benzene type things or propane or something like that. And you actually have two burners and it's fairly decent size, but I have a feeling that that would be the first type of stove I would find that would be, uh, you know, being sold in yard sales and be a, a get good deal. And again, why are people selling these things? Just too much stuff. Maybe they, you know, they were very interested in camping at one time and no longer have the interest or God forbid could be that someone in the family died. That was, you know, a lot of times that's what's happening. Some of the stuff is being sold and the person they originally belonged to is no longer with us. So that's the way it goes. So we'll continue on.